This video gives you instructions on how to enter your high stakes artifacts into Test Stream for EDC 731. So you'll want to log into your Test Stream portfolio, and then when you get there, your portfolio will probably only show EDS and teacher leadership. So click on that. Then when you get there along this bar on the left hand side is all of the artifacts that you will need to enter as you move through the program. This section, teaching and learning, is where artifacts from our course go. And just as a heads up, after we met in our last class, I saw this field experience section and I've just put in a um, request to Shirley Wilson to find out if your field experience documentation needs to go in there. There is not a space for it now. Hang on to your sign-up sheet because it may have to go in there. And if it does, I will let you know before the course is over. I should hear back from Ms. Wilson um, in a few days of this recording. So that's a heads up now about all of this. So let's click into this section for your school-based research project. And I have made the decision that the, the full project is actually going to go into the other section, 731. So just follow my instructions and I'll back you up on this. So to do this, look at this bar down here at the bottom and you see text and image slideshows, standards, attachments, videos, and links. Those are different ways to bring content into your task, into task stream. I would suggest that you start with the text and image section. This is going to be the section where you're going to describe what's the content you're entering for people reviewing your portfolio. Keep in mind that your portfolio, just like a portfolio that you would see in hard copy, it's got all this stuff in it, but you need to explain what's in there. So you would enter into this section a brief explanation of your self-reflection. I forgot. So I have created one over in a Google document just to make the video fast. You can actually type that in here. So you can look at, you can stop the video in a little bit and look at the wording here. These are suggested wording. Feel free to use some of this wording um, if you'd like to. And then I'm going to click Save and Return. And no, I am not ready to submit. I don't know why TaskStream showed me that. That's a new TaskStream feature. So you can see now that under the 731 section, I've created a text and image section. And I am in it in that section, as I mentioned before, I've described what's going on there for in, to somebody reviewing it who's unfamiliar with our course. Keep that in mind. Portfolio reviewers may be faculty from other that teach other courses or even possibly faculty or accreditation reviewers who aren't familiar with what's going on in the course at all. So there's the reflection. Then I'm going to actually add the self-reflection document. So I'm going to click the attachments button. I'm going to browse for the document. Remember you created a document and you've already submitted that to me. Oh, the standards growth document, because that's what we're looking for here. And then in a little bit, I'll show you this description section. Just make sure you see it now where you can add a description of it. But I won't do that now. And I'm going to click off. No, don't show me that again. OK. Um, so now this section is complete because it has your standards growth and a portfolio reflection describing the document and helping readers understand how to look at it. So you may want to stop the video now and if you hadn't already and look at the text I put in the text and image section. So that would be done. Now 
the 731, the actual course selection. I've already done some work in this before starting the video. So take a look at my text, text and image section. And you may want to stop the video and read all the words. I've gotten you started on the reflection there. And then down at the bottom, my file is breaking into inquiry. That would be actually your curriculum project itself. And then you see in here that I, the, how the description would appear if you use the attachment description. And I give you the suggestion about how that could be handy for you if you're using different files. And then I wanted to show you one more feature. Notice Fiesta, Fiesta, Fiesta. Oops, I'm thinking too much about our last night in class and I made a mistake in this section, so I need to now correct that. I don't need to have Fiesta, Fiesta, Fiesta in my portfolio document. So I'm gonna click on Manage Attachments. I wanted to make sure you saw that button and then to realize that here are all your attachments so I can edit that one and then I can go in here and for the description, I can enter this document gives my self-assessment of the quality of, of my curriculum. Okay. Mainly, and then click Save and Return. And now I'm back to this view, and that's it. So when you have your self-reflection on your growth, the self-reflection document that you've already created and I've checked off, it goes in here with a portfolio reflection introducing it. And when you have your actual curriculum project here and the self-assessment of quality here and a reflection introducing those to readers who are unfamiliar with our course, then you're done. So that's where this submit button comes in. So you then you're submitting for a high stakes submission. You don't have to worry about the optional comments. And notice up here, your work will be locked and no further edits will be possible. Now, I'm surprised that a list of faculty hasn't come up there, but I don't want to click the yes button because the yes button actually enters this into the um, system. Well, I can kick it back. Never mind. So click yes, submit. Okay, it looks like it went on through. So, and then you get this window, this window, which will show you as you go through the program, it will show you where you are in all of the portions of your portfolio. And then do you see the locked button there? Because you submitted that one, then it's locked and you can't make any changes until I assess it. Uh, but there's not a lock button on the other one. So go back up to the home button and then back into your portfolio back into this, ah, there's that lock button again. You see it down there on ADS 731. And so now you got to go into the other one and submit it. Yes, submit. I'm not going to click that one because then I'll have to go back and fix it. So there you go. That would be it. If you've got questions, just reply back to this video um, and I will help you as best I can.